Welcome everyone. Um, good afternoon and thank you for coming to the Leadership Enrichment Internship Employer Info Session. My name is Ruth Huang. I use she, her pronouns and I am the LEI Program Coordinator and I'm so excited to meet you all, see some familiar faces um, and we have a jam-packed agenda for our time together in the next hour. And my hope is that we will balance talking at you versus talking with you, but know that we do have a lot of information coming your way. Um, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge that we are located on Kalapuya Ilihi, the traditional indigenous homeland of the Kalapuya people. Following treaties between 1851 and 1855, Kalapuya people were dispossessed of their indigenous homeland by the, the, uh, by the United States government and forcibly removed to the Coast Reservation in Western Oregon. And today, descendants are citizens of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Celeste Indians of Oregon and continue to make important contributions in their communities at UO and across the land we now refer to as Oregon. We express our respect for all federally recognized tribal nations of Oregon, and we also express our respect for all other displaced indigenous people who call Oregon home. And I'm going to share my screen. We do have a slide deck with lots of information. Um, are you able to see the screen? Thumbs up if you can. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. All right, and so this is our agenda for today. Um, like I mentioned, we have a lot of information for you and please save your questions until the end um, or drop them in chat. We'll try to answer them as we go. We designed this session not only to help you learn more about the LEI program, but also to prompt your thinking around um, your organization's needs, why you want to host an intern and how having an intern might benefit you and your organization. To begin, we want to um, leave some space for introductions to see who's in the room. Um, but as you can see, we have a lot of folks. So if I can invite you to use the chat function to introduce yourself with your name, your pronouns if you're comfortable, your organization and your role, and your response to the question, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grow up? I'm going to just leave a couple of minutes so we can see what is being put in chat. Oh, this is so fun. Sign language translator, librarian, teacher Broadway star, Truck driver, I thought that was pretty cool. I, <laughs> that was definitely something I wanted to do. Artist. Ooh, volcanoes, that is interesting. That's awesome. I just wanna make sure, are my slides showing? I think it is. Okay, great, thank you. This is so fun. Thank you all for um, sharing. It's really nice to learn about your childhood dreams. And I promise later on, you will have a chance to um, share verbally um, with your mic on if you'd like. Um, we have a lot to get through. So just trying to manage our time here. Perfect. So um, again, thank you for sharing and introducing yourself. Continue to do that in chat. Um, to start, we want to provide an overview of the University of Oregon's Division of Equity and Inclusion, the division that offers and coordinates the LEI program. And I'd like to invite our Assistant Vice President for Campus and Community Engagement, Dr. Leslie Ann Pittard, to share a brief overview of the Division of Equity and Inclusion. Leslie Ann joined the um, DEI team in 2017 and has been a champion of 
equity, inclusion, and diversity in higher education for nearly 15 years. In her role as AVP, she advances the Vice President's strategic mission by identifying and strengthening key relationships with faculty, staff, and students on campus, as well as community organizations, local government, and civic organizations in ways that make equity, inclusion, and diversity commonplace at UO and beyond. And so I am now going to hand over the virtual mic to Dr. Pittard. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ruth. I really appreciate your energy um, and all the leadership and vision you brought to LEI. Really excited to see each of you on the call today. Thank you so much for your time and for being here. Uh, it's my pleasure to just briefly share a little bit about where LEI program is um, and how it is. It's a part of the Division of Equity and Inclusion. I'll talk a little bit more about the gift that we received in 2017 to help launch this effort and where we're going. Um, but as Ruth mentioned, um, DEI, um, it really our role is to ensure that diversity, equity, and inclusion are indeed commonplace both on and beyond our campus. Um, inclusive excellence, equitable access to opportunities, providing um, resources and benefits for all students, faculty, staff, administrators, and alumni really is our key priority. Um, our shop, our, our work is significant and our shop is lean. Um, we're comprised of a few units. Our central unit is the Office of the Vice president. Um, we also have the Center for Diversity and Community led by Dr. Charlotte Motes Gallagher. I should mention, um, I didn't mention it before, but our vice president is Dr. Yvette Alex Asenso, who's actually connected me to many of you. She sends her warm regards. Um, she obviously OVPEI is really sort of her core unit where much of her research on race, love, authenticity, courage, and empathy, as well as our signature events such as the African American Workshop and Lecture Series, Dart House, the Center on Diversity and Community led by Dr. Charlotte Motes Gallagher really is our home for faculty success. Dr. Charlotte leads um, important work such as the search advocacy program, writing circles, and other key initiatives that really are intended to ensure that faculty, um, graduate students and faculty are successful and advanced and are promoted in the academy. We focus on students significantly, obviously with student success being our priority. We work very closely with um, undergraduate education and student success to ensure that the Center for Multicultural Academic Excellence um, provides culturally relevant advising to um, our, all of our students, which is um, a significant part again to their success and matriculation here at the UO. Um, and also really grateful for the leadership of Jamar Bean and the Multicultural Center, um, which helps really support student leadership organizations connected to the Associated Students at the University of Oregon. Um, the MCC houses 26 student organization and is really doing phenomenal work um, in ensuring that our students have leadership development as well as access to civic engagement and other opportunities. I'll close by saying that what attracted me to the University of Oregon nearly four years ago was our commitment to the ideal framework. Um, these are five core pillars, um, inclusion, diversity, evaluation, achievement, and leadership. So in this ideal framework, we've asked every school, every college, every unit to complete diversity action plans. Um, we are looking forward to preparing to launch our ideal 2.0 this year, which really will be driving more forward in a metrics-based orientation and working closely with our local diversity committees. I know I have said a lot, um, I will yield back, um, but I'm excited again to just help set the tone a little bit for where LEI sits um, and how it is a significant con con contributing program to the Division of Equity and Inclusion. Thank you, Dr. Pittard, and we will be hearing again from you in about a minute, so <laughs> stay tuned. Um, okay, so as Dr. Pittard said, with CASE's um, campus and community engagement, with our team's focus on student success and community partnerships, the LEI program perfectly embodies these priorities and has been a significant, has been a significant um, program in helping us build and strengthen relationships with community organizations. And that's why I'm so glad that we've got so many folks in the Zoom room interested in hosting interns and becoming partners and learning more. So before we dive into the finer details of the program, um, I want to invite a couple of folks, if you're willing, to share what brought you to this info session, um, maybe something you hope to take away and um, 
Yeah, we'll just have a few folks share if you'd like. Any willing volunteers, go ahead and just unmute. Uh, yeah, Eric Richardson here. Uh, I think that uh, we were part of maybe the inaugural effort around this program uh, when it first came out. And we really are uh, want to be a bridge between the local community and talent that uh, really is coming through the University of Oregon. Uh, we want to be able to tap that talent while the students are here and really have them help us, you know, raise the next pool of talent from our local schools and populations. So I think just having that synergy between community-based organization and U of O is really important as we go forward. So I'm just happy to be able to have this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you, Eric. We really appreciate your partnership. We're excited. Would anyone else like to share? I just wanted to mention, I have had two interns from this program and they were both top notch. They were strong students in my program. I did not know one of them and both of them I hired after they were sponsored by DEI and it was a great relationship. So I highly recommend the students who are trained and vetted by this program. And I came to try to think through, could it work virtually if I'm traveling a little bit in the next year? Thanks. Hi, my name is Emily David. I'm the director of the library and museum in Springfield. And um, as a, uh, a department of the city, well, all of the city government is about serving our community, but we really focus on um, our community and what our community needs are. And um, we're getting ready to go through uh, a new strategic plan process in the spring and really want to include um, equity, diversion and inclusion and anti-racism into our strategic plan. So we're starting to look at that. And um, our city manager sent uh, the information about this session. Uh, it seemed like might be a good fit to have somebody, uh, an intern that could help kind of outside eyes looking at what we're doing and, um, and help us with that process. So that's why I'm here, thanks. Thanks, Emily, and welcome. Okay, great. So now um, I'm going to invite Dr. Petard back to speak again, and this time to provide some history and context about the LEI program. Um, so Dr. Petard, the floor is yours. Thanks again, Ruth. Um, great to hear folks' contributions, both verbally as well as in the chat. So it's really interesting to understand how um, LEI could help be assistive to your organization and also what we're looking for in a strong partner, um, student-employer partnership. So the Leadership Enrichment Internship, or as you've heard us refer to as LEI, is a paid mentored internship program um, that gives underrepresented students career counseling, academic counseling, advising, and hands-on work experience in careers in which their backgrounds have been historically underrepresented. So when this program was first um, envisioned, really, again, it was to this point of how best can we help respond to this need to diversify our workforce? Um, we also have understood some other equity-based opportunities for our students who might be interested in careers um, that might not have paid internship opportunities just offered through their majors. So we've been grateful over the last several years to partner with employers like yourself. We have campus partners as well, um, really giving us an opportunity to provide students with hands-on, real-time, um, not only professional experiences, but we're also really looking for chances for our students to grow professionally um, and having um, a space in which they can grow in, in, in a network and also with um, 
a mentor. So LEI really is a high touch opportunity, again, really signaling um, our commitment to um, workforce diversification. Um, in terms of future directions, and even to the point of the partners here on the call, we've grown a lot in the last four years, and Ruth is absolutely taking us to the next level. We have an alignment with UO Career Services, which we'll talk a little bit more about, but are excited to ensure that our students are getting consistent experiences that help prepare them for success in the workforce. Um, another future direction and something I know we don't have much time today, but we have really grown an ecosystem of employers. So what we have heard as a feedback point is what are ways in which we could create a more strategic employer partnership or network. So as Ruth continues um, to share more about our program, as we think forward to in ways that we could be assistive and supportive of each other, really it's coming online with this employer network, which we're excited to shape with you and talk more about. Thank you. Yes, we are so excited to grow that network and um, I will get to that in a little bit here. So for this next part, we're going to really dive into the finer details of the program. Um, and again, there's, there's just going to be a lot of information um, and a lot of it is on our website as well. So if you need a refresher, I encourage you to do that. Um, and once we upload this video, you can always come back to it. And so with the LEI program, our hope um, and the intended outcomes for students is, um, is that as a result of participating in this internship program, they will gain um, all the things you see on the screen. So real life work experience in a professional setting being one, um, mentorship and supervision from professionals. For professional and leadership development, of course, they will um, learn that on the job in their internship and outside of the program, we also supplement their experience with cohort meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and also workshops where we bring in um, speakers to, to share on different topics and facilitate these discussions with students to um, encourage reflection as well. And networking is a huge part of this experience, as you all know, I'm sure, um, meeting folks in the professional realm and networking with folks in your target field, in your industry, um, and then also having that community building time with other students and other interns and hearing about what they're involved in in their internships and um, reflecting and using each other as sounding boards. And ultimately, we hope that the leadership program, leadership internship um, program will help students um, gain clarity about their career goals to which many students have shared that these internships are helpful for just that. And I want to provide an overview of the program schedule. So we are currently recruiting for the winter spring term in 2022. And right now we're doing um, employer recruitment. We will then be moving on to student recruitment once we know what internship positions and opportunities are available. Um, and once matches have been made, then the program officially begins in January. So you'll see that we'll start with some orientation with the students in the first week, and then they will begin their internship work um, the second week of January. And you'll see that there's also two parts. So the internship will run through all of winter term, which is 10 weeks. And our hope is that students will be able to take a week break for spring break to recharge and um, rejuvenate for the next term after, um, after their winter term, and then come back and continue their internship with you um, for part two for about five weeks. And then the internship will conclude with a capstone presentation where um, all the host employers will be invited, students will be invited to share their internship experience, um, the learning, the growth that's happened, and talk a little bit about their next steps. And so we um, want to share this, but also encourage flexibility, knowing that um, sometimes timings can change. Who knows what January is going to look like next year? Um, so just keeping that in mind, and um, we will be sure to inform you if there are changes or any um, adaptations that need to be made. In terms of the program structure, um, we have lots of support for students and also for you as employers. So on the student experience end, like I said, we do offer workshops outside of their internship work. 
Um, and we will, we will meet weekly. So sometimes there'll be a workshop, sometimes it might be a cohort meeting. Other times we will have individual meetings so that we can touch base and talk more specifically about any um, maybe challenges they're facing or just sort of process through their experience there. And we also incorporate reflection um, and group exercises so that they are engaging with each other and building that community. And if students um, need support with accessing technology for their internships, we are able to support that as well on a university event. In terms of support for employers, we want to make sure that we help you with onboarding. Um, so we are envisioning in November or December, once sites are selected, we can then work with employers to get into more details about what you can expect and how to, how to prepare as you onboard your intern in January. And then of course you will have access to me as the coordinator anytime you have questions or just wanna bounce some ideas. Um, I'm accessible, I'm available to, to support in whatever way is helpful. And then we also want to do a mid, midpoint site visit Depending on the format of the internship, this may take place in person, this may be virtual. Um, we'll flex and see what the state of things look like in January, um, but this would be an opportunity to touch base, see how things are going, determine um, what the remainder of the internship should look like, if there's any um, adjustments that need to be made for both the employers and students um, to have a chance to share how things are working out. And then as, as Dr. Pittard um, spoke about, we are cultivating this employer network. Um, this is a um, network that we're hoping to strengthen and um, provide networking opportunities, for example, so y'all can meet each other and hear about what you're doing in your internships with your students. So for employers that are hosting interns, these are some of the main responsibilities. So one of the first things you'll be involved with is the hiring process. And what that looks like is um, our department, we will do the initial screening of student applications, we'll conduct um, um, paper screenings, and then also an interview with students to move forward. And then we hope to refer two to three candidates for your internship opportunity so that you will have a chance to interview them and meet the candidates for yourself and then let us know um, if you know who you would like to select for your internship. And uh, the overall program is 16 weeks, like I shared, broken into those two parts. And because students will be taking classes and potentially working other part-time jobs in that time too, we wanna make sure we give them room for balance in their schedule. So it's a part-time internship for about 10 to 12 hours a week. And you will determine that schedule with your intern based on their needs, their class schedules, et cetera. As an employer, um, a responsibility is also to provide ongoing training and supervision of the intern, identifying um, their learning goals and structuring the internship in a way that will help to advance those, that learning and achieve those goals. And that would be um, at a minimum, a weekly meeting so that you can check in, you can discuss the projects that the intern's working on, reflect on what they're learning, answering any questions, sharing feedback with them. Um, and then also facilitating networking among your team, um, your teams and across your departments, as that's one of the really valuable pieces of students gaining this direct hands-on real world experience is to meet other folks. So your role would be to help facilitate that and connect them with other folks at your organization. And also tracking and verifying hours, I'll do that with you once a month. Um, on the payroll end because we do cover the wages for the interns. So internally we'll process that with HR, but of course verifying their work hours with you to make sure we're compensating appropriately. And then finally, as I mentioned before, a midpoint site visit and then concluding the internship program with a capstone celebration. And so in terms of commitment, really we are interested in partnering with folks who share our values in advancing career and um, professional development in students. And so mentorship is huge in this program and then helping students navigate the workplace and that could, um, you know, through conversations and formally and then also with formal training, helping students understand the org, um, org culture and um, org charts, for example, so they know 
how the organization is um, structured on a bigger level. And then also we're looking for, for you to collaborate with us in problem solving. If something does come up or adjustments need to be made, we really hope that we can proactively communicate and work together to do this and not wait until the issues have gotten so big that um, there's no way to overcome it. So we really want to build that relationship with you as well. And that's why we want to be accessible and available for you. Um, and likewise for you to be accessible and available to your intern to answer their questions and troubleshoot anything that come up. Um, if possible, um, one thing that, um, that we always suggest is to pair interns up with a formal supervisor for the internship and also non-supervisor colleagues to serve as mentors. That way interns can hear multiple perspectives, process with different folks, um, and know that they've got a network of support around them at their internship. And of course, in terms of shared values, we are committed to advancing equity and inclusion in the workplace, at the university, and the community. And we hope that you'll share those values as well. And ultimately, to understand that students, interns are students first. So they do have academic commitments. They might have other um, things that they're juggling on their plate. So again, being flexible, keeping that in mind, um, and just keeping that communication open and making sure there are touch points especially if the internship does take place in a remote environment, that communication is more important than ever. So now I'd like to invite Sarah Mason from our University Career Center to share more about the employ employer benefits um, and also talking about crafting an internship experience. So Sarah, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Thanks, Ruth. And I do want to just take this moment um, about halfway through to thank everyone for being here and really just to acknowledge that um, coming out the last week of August after heat waves and smoke and living in a pandemic um, is um, valiant and meaningful and we're grateful for your time and attention. Giving our time and attention to screens and information is not easy. So we're grateful that you're all here and that you're willing to learn with us and excited that you'll consider hosting an intern and share this opportunity with colleagues and other employers. I work in the Central University Career Center and my day is predominantly spent working with external employers of all different sizes. And I also just want to thank you and acknowledge that we have big and small employers here. Um, nonprofits, um, employers here on campus, for-profits, and that um, hosting an intern um, takes um, energy and effort and heart. And so um, thinking through that, some, some key benefits to all of you is that we are covering the cost and that's a support to the organization and to the student. Um, students um, are supported by professionals here on campus and leadership. Um, we certainly find that employers benefit not only because they're supporting a student, but they also gain outside perspective and the next generation's perspective on their work and what they're hoping to accomplish in their goals. Um, this enhances leadership skills within your organization, offering an opportunity for your, your staff to learn to mentor, support, lead, and manage um, in an entry-level opportunity. You get the chance to showcase your culture and the impact of your product or mission to university students from a variety of backgrounds and perspectives. Um, you get to identify and build um, early talent, and that's a big part of building um, future workforce and um, encouraging and attracting students. Students will share their experience with their, with their other students, um, so you will um, be experiencing a ripple effect from, from what you do and how you host your intern. Um, very valuable to the community and region as you're contributing to workforce development and economic development. And finally, um, a big benefit to employers in this program is direct access to people like Ruth who are supporting um, this DEI initiative and preparing to um, really launch students with diverse perspectives into the workforce. So now we're gonna to start to think a little bit more about designing the internship and what kind of makes for an ideal experience for you and the student. Um, and with that, I wanted to take a few minutes um, to offer some insights that we maybe collectively can share. Um, 
Perhaps some of you like me have been an intern or hosted an intern. I've done that in both small and large organizations. And um, maybe there's some experiences that you have that you might wanna share. If any of you might wanna kind of go off mute for a couple minutes and just say, you know, what opportunities did you see or experience or give that worked out well? I can start. I worked at a small nonprofit, arts profit, uh, arts um, nonprofit in the area, and we um, we clearly wanted to diversify our audience. We wanted new energy and information, and we also had a lot of projects that a small team could not get to. And so we thought we would combine those two and really um, support engagement with our work and our mission and learning from students and helping to move along some some projects. Um, anyone else on the call host an intern? Go ahead, Sherry. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, I just wanted to add that as odd as it might sound, I think that during this crazy pandemic virtual world, I've actually had more successful time um, engaging with interns. Um, it's always, as we know, it's hard to make a commitment and then to try to work with an intern into your day-to-day -day routine and try to get everything done and have time uh, to, to adequately mentor and intern someone. Um, and then when the pandemic happened, when we were also interning someone, we felt I felt like we really lost connection because we weren't able to be in person anymore. So this last year, I really got a little more regimented with scheduling time for my intern and regular meetings and all and i felt that this past this past year i had an intern each one of the last three terms and i felt that it was much more successful and we had a much much better engagement with each other and communication and so it actually it actually helped me to um to manage that and feel like it was more successful so i'm really looking forward to what i've learned over this last 18 months into, into working with this LEI intern again, because I, I have had experience a couple of years ago. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Sherry. And I see, Nancy, you've mentioned here that you gave them simple graphics tasks and, um, and uh, the older student provided some guidance and context. So you had multiple interns and you were doing a cohort model there, kind of. Yeah, I had, I had, already employed a paid student and that mm -hmm. paid student helped the intern from DEI. So that worked out great because it gave a little more continuity for the student. Nice. And then they have some peer support. Can't really see many hands or anything. So if you just want to pop off mute to, to add anything, Jane, I think I saw your hand. Uh, Sarah, I'd like to underscore the benefits for the employer. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'd like to really add the interns that we've had uh, so I, I'm speaking about the Northwest Indian Language Institute. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that we, is a challenge, is a challenge is making language relevant to, uh, to youth. And so by being able to have the interns, the exchange of them learning tech skills and curriculum development skills, they, and, and the three or four interns that we've had have also studied their languages. They brought that to us. They brought the relevance of the language. They brought the the newness, the freshness. How to get you know how for language to be relevant in, in their world and and we all love in, in the institute. We just love working with with um, younger students with our students because they bring such a, a, a vitality to the institute. So we were able to benefit the each scheme language class at the university was able to benefit from the interns tribes that we worked with were so I just, I want to say that their perspective where they're coming from what's relevant to them in their mm -hmm. life is really important. Mm -hmm. Really well said. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, for the sake of time, if there's any other thoughts drop them in the chat, um, or if there's a last minute comment. We really just wanna kind of um, open up the, the thinking creative channels around those benefits and opportunities and what's kind of 
worked for folks. Um, I know here in the Career Center, obviously, we're, we employ students and have students who provide a lot of feedback and information about what are the best employers and how to best communicate and encourage students to be involved in our events. And so um, thinking about those opportunities around your mission, your product, your organization, where potentially you can have um, sort of those next gen eyes, those um, those creative thoughts and giving them that opportunity to bring their full voice to your organization and help you think um, in sort of transformational ways. Um, and, and in light of that, as, as Ruth um, advanced the slides for us, um, part of what we're seeing in our office and what we see across campus are some core areas that we encourage employers to consider. Um, I just saw somebody pop into the admit. Maybe you can grab that, Ruth. Um, so U of O students tend to be um, pretty passionate about public interest and advocacy, um, marketing, design, and outreach, sustainability, and social justice, and having a clear sense of purpose. And even if your product or service isn't directly related to some of those things, the degree to which your company um, cares about and invests in community and those causes are also really relevant. And it's also a really great project for students to be involved in. And I think that's another important part of a, excuse me, a successful internship is that the student has something over the course of these 15 odd weeks to really start and finish, that they can actually build um, up into their sort of work story and to their portfolio, portfolio presentation. Um, for example, when I had an intern, I had them work on a major event and do some critical work around engaging new audiences and new sponsors in such a way that they start and finished it over the course of their time, that they could show progress, they could have um, successful results, and they could tell that story in their interview and just to have that fantastic experience. Um, Ruth um, provided for us a few of the past examples, um, in addition to what I've just shared, that we've seen electronic health record systems, um, creating proposals. Um, you can see there art exhibits, digital exhibits, um, outreach and community programs and events, um, web, web resource content development. You know, we have a variety of skills um, um, that these students can bring, and assessing that with them at the beginning will make all the difference as you design um, your, your position and bring them on board. And we can advance to the next slide there. And here's um, a nice summary. I realize I'm looking at two, I'm looking at two screens. Um, this is a good overview of our past partners in this area. So we see we have on campus as well as community um, related groups and a variety of um, you know, issues and resources and causes involved there. So just to really clarify legally in the state of Oregon, um, it's important to understand the difference between an internship um, and, and what's not an internship. I think most importantly is that it's planned and focused on experiential learning um, for the support of the student with the student's learning goals in mind. Um, it's short term. And it complements the student's um, curiosity and learning. It gives them an opportunity to explore and understand the professional field. It understands that they may be still in the classroom and they have classroom involved um, uh, demands. And it hopefully could reflect and help them apply some of what they're learning in the classroom. In terms of the legal standards, it's also really important to note that this is not, uh, this needs to ensure that this is not a replacement for existing staff or lack of staff. Um, and in, ter in terms of labor law, we would want to make sure that you're not paying um, an intern to do something another employee should be doing or was doing, but rather this is a complementary um, uh, project or work or function um, in your organization. So it, it doesn't necessarily replace it, um, but it provides um, support. And there are some settings just for your information, should you not win this um, compensated host sites, um, nonprofits and government agencies can host interns without pay, but our campus recommends and prefers that we pay all of our interns. So um, 
thinking about designing your um, your internship, I I often share with um, employers um, that come to us looking to build these out. Take a moment for maybe the next few days and just sort of jot down all the projects you're not getting to. Maybe ask several departments or several coworkers to jot those down as well, and then bring them to a meeting and discuss which of these could be interesting learning opportunities, which of these things could be projects that we could um, kind of wrap around and support um, a young student in their professional um, development. You know, hopefully it's not all all the tough stuff that you just don't want to do, but some of those things that several departments are seeing, we, we, we really don't know how to fill this gap um, in the sense that we want to kind of add to it. Um, and looking at sort of what skills do you want most of your new hires to have and what kinds of projects would help them um, with build those skills with interns. Um, look at your organizational capacity. Is your department, is your organization intern ready? You know, do a little temperature check. Do you have a supervisor who enjoys supporting and developing young people? Do you potentially have a few extra people that could play mentorship um, or coach to them every once in a while? A weekly check-in is really the way to go, as Sherry said. So ensuring that everyone has a half an hour to an hour to, to check in with the student and talk about their learning goals, answer questions. And the first couple of weeks, there might be a lot of questions. So ensuring that your environment's intern ready for that. And also understanding the flexibility that the students, whatever project you're delivering should be a little bit time flexible and not too time constrained. Um, so those are some of the things to be thinking about as you design your um, internship plan. So as we've kind of said before, um, and I hope you're all taking notes or jotting down any of your questions because we do want to get to them and help you think. But um, for now, just kind of maybe ask yourself, how does an intern fit into your existing work? What complementary or supportive learning opportunities could you provide? And how might you prepare to support that intern? Um, thinking through both the preparation for the project, what materials or tools or planning needs to be in place. Um, how will you build in some reflection on how the student did, um, what, how they're feeling about it, what they've learned. And then also, um, you know, sort of a debrief around, are we reflecting on goals? So wrapping all those things up, um, and thinking through, would they be in a specific department or would they even potentially rotate um, so that you can provide it, um, spread the workload a little bit among your, your colleagues and peers. We always encourage onboarding with some rotation as well. So as we um, start to think about the exact next steps, you'll want to kind of leave this session doing that work of building the content that um, you might want the intern to help complement your existing departments and roles. Um, begin writing a job description. Um, this is going to be crucial to the application process for Ruth, and we do have some tips that we'll send out after this on that, but really keeping it access accessible and a really open filter don't require a lot of experience, don't require a lot of spe specificity, but rather kind of think through what is it that you're going to bring to the table, what is it that you want them to bring to the table, and what kinds of projects and experiences will they be exposed to. Um, and think through who on your staff will pay the supervisor and mentor role, and will they be able to kind of carve out that time. Um, and finally, look at kind of a timeline and prepare for reviewing and ap applications. Probably each site will have two to three applications, so it shouldn't be too time consuming. We're gonna help kind of filter that for you. Um, but these are some really important next steps for you to be thinking about. And I do wanna highlight as we move to the next slide, keeping in mind, in planning the onboarding, the check-ins, the reflection and the projects. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I know Handing off to Ruth. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, it has been a very full 48 minutes. Um, I'm so excited. And thank you for um, being a part of this. I just wanted to share a couple of slides of real stories and you know, reflection and feedback that we have received from students and employers alike. So as you can see here, these are some um, impact statements from our students about their experiences. And so students really do find these internships to be incredibly valuable, um, supporting their academics as well as their future career goals and skills skill development and feeling like they matter as well, that their voice matters, that organizations really do want to listen to their perspectives and bring in their full experiences. Um, and, and it's a really positive experience for many students. And then I also wanted to share some employer impact statements of the value that students in turn have brought to their work. And um, Many of you here, actually, when you registered, you shared that you have had interns before, and um, the majority of you experienced having positive or very positive experiences. So I trust that um, you recognize the value and what this can bring. And for those of you who might be considering bringing on an intern for the first time, I think this is a really exciting endeavor. And to close, oh, this is a photo from our 2019 cohort when we were all still in person, hopefully soon. And to close, I just wanted to leave you with um, some links. And again, I will send these out in a follow-up um, email. So don't feel like you have to um, take all this down right now. But um, if you feel like you are ready to submit an application, please apply online by September 10th. And if you have participated in the LEI program before, this is one change you'll notice that we have done away with PDFs and um, file attachments as your applications. We've moved online. So I hope this is a welcome change that makes your lives a little bit easier. And if you have any questions or would like more support, please reach out um, to that DEI case at uoregon.edu email. I'll be responding to you directly. And finally, do share this opportunity with your colleagues if you have um, other folks in your organizations that might be interested or you know of other organizations that you think could benefit from having interns, please do share this opportunity with them. So I am going to end screen share and we have some time for questions. I'm gonna look in the chat to see if we have things. When will this session be available online? Great question, Nancy. We may have to do some editing, but I'm happy to um, upload it and send you a link so that um, this group of folks, you all have it first. And we, I'm going to hang on for at least a few minutes after. So if you wanna hang around and talk in more detail, feel free. Um, Otherwise, you may have the gift of time if there are no questions. Nancy, is that a hand? No, oh, okay. No, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you very much. It was informative and gave us a lot to think about. I appreciate it. And I just started thinking about my application. Take care. Thank you. We are excited. Great. Thank you, Ruth. And everyone who so presented much. today, appreciate it you'll see an application from us. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Yeah, so hey, yeah, thank you guys. I'm looking forward to hopefully uh, working with you all, even with Sarah, any other students we can get up in here. Uh, there's a lot of work, uh, just we're, we're looking at, uh, fine tuning five work areas. And, and so I was just thinking about how we could do that is really just having uh, that intern really get to see the cross-sectional nature of health, housing, legal redress, you know, education uh, uh, and environmental climate justice. So yeah, I'm looking forward to just working with you guys and, and uh, up in our game and, you know, helping those students really, uh, you know, uh, have their first step into all this work. So thank you, guys. Thank you for saying that, Eric. Thanks for all that you do. And I just want to echo your comments with, I think you were part of that inaugural cohort 
that talked about sort of the benefits of having this cross sector network. Um, so yes. it would be good to keep talking about how we could grow that together and mm -hmm. what would be helpful um, to the internships, to our communities, et cetera. So that's really exciting. I mean, right on. And, and the, I guess the big thing in our area, we're very rural. And even though we're in Eugene, what happens in Cresswell affects us. What happens in JC affects us. People come here, go shopping, interact with us all the time. So, uh, so what we're doing at the University of Oregon, uh, we like, I'd like to see uh, more impact in our local county, in the county in which the University of Oregon sits. Uh, to be affected by the work that is happening on campus for our kids and families. Uh, the county uh, itself, Wayne County over the summer, voted to, to declare racism a public health crisis. So that means that all the work we're doing, no matter what sector you're in, needs to address this, this for the benefit of our health, our community health. So, you know, I just, I just encourage us to really see how we can invest more in our county, which when we say rural, uh, that means and a lot of times it means poverty. <laughs> it means lack of education, literacy rates, not low. So all these things are how to have to be addressed going forward. And so having students from the U of O who are, who are inspired, who are literate, who, are, who have passion in our community uh, is what we need. We need more of that you know, and who are all the other sectors that are here and whatnot. So yeah, uh, thank you again. Yes, it's good to see you all. And it's been a rough year. Uh, miss my U of O crew. Seemed like I, we missed a whole year last year, you know, <laughs> online, but very busy internally. But I hope that we can somehow start to work better or, you know, as we, you know, get better at this distant, uh, workspace. Agreed. I see Ruth has unmuted, but Eric, thank you for always giving us inspiration and motivation um, and thinking about how we can truly be problem solvers. Um, and I'm, this is why we're excited that Ruth is helping lead us forward. You know, we recognize this is going to be a different year and we have to be flexible. So we're looking forward to finding ways to um, support opportunities that are relevant and timely and also re reflective of our broader pandemic. It is 2.57, I will mute myself, but I hope that if someone else has something they wanna say that you do share. Hey, uh, I have a quick question. So um, are students able to get internships through their individual departments if they, their departments have uh, credits? And the reason I ask because with this internship being 16 weeks, it covers winter and part of spring. And I can see students even though they don't need credits for their major specifically, some might, but they might need credits to hit their 180 credits to graduate. And is that a possibility, whether they do one credit or whether they do the counseling psychology credits through the Career Center, is it a possibility? I'm gonna leave, uh, well, I, Damien, thank you for that question. Um, I'm hoping that we can follow up about that and see how we might be able to partner. Um, we, we have not been a credit bearing program, but if there are ways in which um, we could think about to the point that you raise now and how we could move forward in future, that is a future direction that we would like to um, be able to provide. I mean, as an equitable opportunity, both in terms of pay, as well as in terms of credit. So we might have to be a little nuanced in our response to your great question. Cool. I can just offer briefly, not wanting to go over time, that yes, as Damien said, we do have a four credit class in the career center. It is first come, first served. It doesn't matter where the internship is, a student can apply to use our credit. Um, and then many departments do have like a 404, a general intern thing um, within their major. Um, so we can work with, with Ruth and the team to help students who are interested. Well, that, that's cool. Thank you. But, but I guess my question is, when would they have to apply, especially since it's, it covers part of two terms? Would they, you know, normally they have to apply before that specific term starts. Uh, how will that look? And on what you know, will it go on winter or spring? Yeah, so just kind of thinking about that, uh, especially when, when we think about students who have to be at a certain number of credits for financial aid, 
uh, what will that, yeah, just kind of thinking about what would that look like uh, and how would that paperwork change? Now, granted, you know, in certain schools, like we have a one credit and I'm sure that we'll be flexible, but it's, I can't speak for other colleges or other institutions at U of O. And I'm just, I, I just really want to figure that out because we could, if students need to earn credit to graduate and they have the opportunity, I mean, I think this is great. Uh, so yeah, just, just some things that I'm thinking about. That's excellent, Damien. As Sarah's mentioned, let's follow up on this and let's find a way to um, respond to that this year if possible, but absolutely in future years, this is the direction we're headed. So would hope that we could continue to partner with you um, given your expertise and advising as well. Thank you. So it is time. We want to respect everyone's time. Are there any last questions that Ruth, Sarah, and myself could help be assisted with? Eric, I see your question here about by the September 10 deadline, how fleshed out should the application be? Um, I'll let Ruth respond to that if Ruth would like to take the lead. Yes, absolutely. I just wrote in chat that our online application will walk you through everything that needs to go into your application. Um, and so for the job description specifically, we ask that you craft it in a separate document and upload it to the online document. Um, and the application outlines what to address, um, for example, core responsibilities or the projects, um, a little summary about your organization or the team specifically that the student will be working on, highlighting the format. Do you envision this to be an in-person, hybrid, or remote? internship and keeping in mind that we may need to go fully virtual depending on um, local guidance and safety at the time. Um, so we have to be a little bit creative as we craft these positions. But if you do need more support, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to, to work with you on that. Yes, I want to say a completely remote internship should be, should work. Leslie Ann, am I, does that seem right? You know, it's hard right now to give a definitive just in our world that we're living. Um, right now as an institution, our goal is to at least be hybrid in the fall. We will obviously, as Ruth has already said, be flexible um, given the guidance that we receive. So my recommendation would be to let's think hybrid and let's think then how we would adjust if we needed to go fully virtual. We want to give our students a, an experience where they are connected. And that is something that they truly missed last year. We all did. Um, so we want to be as accommodating and realistic as possible. Okay, we are at time. So I want to make sure y'all get to maybe the next meeting or take a break from Zoom. Um, reach out if you need anything. Thank you so much for attending our session and look out for that follow-up email. Thank you. Thanks again, Ruth and Sarah. Great job.